certain inches. One step more was needed to make the Land Rover the truly universal vehicle, namely to produce it in both petrol and diesel versions. In 1957, Land Rover introduced an all-new overhead valve four-cylinder diesel that was followed in 1958 by a gasoline engine with a similar design. From now on, you can buy a Land Rover to run on the fuel of your choice. Descendants of these robust engines are still in production today. The decade of the 50s brought prosperity back to the Rover car company as the 250,000th Land Rover rolled off the line in 1959. The possibilities of four-wheel drive caught on with the adventuresome. A new breed of enthusiast emerged, eager to learn about off-road. Perhaps this was the birth of the Land Rover lifestyle, the first step away from its strictly utilitarian role into recreational pursuits. Over time, the Rover Company set up test courses at the factory grounds at Solihull and began to teach. The commonest mistake is to tackle the tricky bits too fast with too high revs. A Land Rover, like any other mount, mechanical or horse flesh, gives of its best when each obstacle is approached intelligently and not in a mad rush. For example, taking uneven muddy ground too fast... The 1950s were known as the age of expeditions. Suddenly, people were driving through Africa, Asia, and South America. And it's estimated that the first vehicle ever seen by one third of the world's population is the Land Rover. In those days, expeditions were part of the development of the vehicle, weren't they? I mean, back in the Series 1 days, we've got 80, well, by then I think there were 86 inch Land Rovers, but we had the Oxford and Cambridge expedition and always rivers to cross, rivers and streams without names. Waters bridged once years ago by men of the 14th Army, who were sometimes called the Forgotten Army. In Singapore, they get the welcome they deserve as the first motorists to have driven across this great overland route. These sturdy Oxford and Cambridge vehicles were examined by the Rover organization on their return, and it was found not a bit the worse for this toughest of endurance tests. 18,000 miles, London to Singapore. These were heady times for Land Rover. Orders flooded in from all over the world. But the original design was ready for improvement. My mum, she always used to get on to my dad. She said, these vehicles, they're made for men, by men. He said, why don't you think of the other half of the population? That's women. He said, look at these corners. They're all sharp and jagged. I ladder my tight stockings in those days across the sharp edge of this thing. These different considerations that she had, <laughs> she'd make well known. <laughs> In April of 1958, an all-new Land Rover debuted that was called the Series 2. This meant that in retrospect, the old model became known as the Series 1. The changes were hailed by aficionados, but perhaps didn't go quite far enough for Barbara Wilkes. Visibility has been improved on the long Land Rover, the rear window is larger, and rounded quarter lights have been added. All windows are now of non-scratch glass. The doors have external handles and can be locked. This new Land Rover brought the line into an evolutionary period. With more work capacity and greater comfort, these new Land Rovers relit the fires of a hot sales era. Yes, the Series 2 Land Rovers are an improvement over their predecessors and also a complete vindication of the original design, for the improvements are in fact only refinements of the original idea. The 1960s could probably be called Land Rover's Age of Specials. 
The Series 2 evolved into the Series 2A, with a few mechanical improvements in 1961. By April 1966, the total number of vehicles produced reached half a million. The vehicles reached new levels of adaptation and multi-use roles. In the mid-60s, there were 150 different variants available. Military forces all over the world ordered armored cars, ambulances, and a lightweight air portable version. And of course, everywhere the army goes, the Land Rover goes too. Here she goes, weighing well over a ton with trailer. And here she comes, safe and sound. And it's just one more problem to which the Land Rover provides the answer. For it packs more power and usefulness into a few cubic feet than any other vehicle on Earth. Around the world, the sight of Land Rovers had become very common, but in America, they were still a bit of a curiosity. As far back as 1950, small numbers had been imported.